Welcome to the Once Upon an Island podcast. I'm your host, Wesley, and today, of course, I'm joined by my co-host, Mary. And Mary, what are we talking about today? We are talking about one of the best seasons of Survivor, Survivor Token Teens. Survivor Token Teens. Sorry. Survivor one video token I made about this season, I said Token Teens the whole time like an idiot. And everybody's like, you sound like an idiot. And I'm like, no. So we're here talking about Token Teens. Um, if you're wondering why we skip from uh, Guatemala to Token Teens instead of going to Exile Island next, um, the two year anniversary of the of this channel. <laughs> September 21st. Whoop, whoop. Ah, very exciting. So because of that, I let the patrons pick to go to another season. I gave um, a list of options. I didn't want to do like Redemption Islands. So that wasn't on there. <laughs> Not yet, at least. <laughs> um, but I gave a list of options. They voted for Token Chains as the one we're going to go to. But after the season's done, we're going to go back to season 12 and we'll resume chronological order. So we're just breaking order for the tier anniversary. Not a normal occurrence here, but... I'm glad they picked this one because mm-hmm. there's so many fun people and so much to talk about. So, um, I mean, do you have anything you want to talk about? Because I have some ideas. Go for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> some fun facts for those uh, listening. May not. I mean, you may know this already, but I thought it was like interesting as we were watching to remember that this is the last season that they shot in November, December. After this, they go to the back-to-back season format where they'll always shoot between like March and August, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll never go back to shooting a winter. I, I don't think ever. Like even now, I sure, 41, 42 I was just shot, and I don't think they're going back ever again. It's it probably has something to do with like they don't change locations. They're saving time. They're mm-hmm. saving money. Oh, I totally get why they stay at because like if you look at the past four seasons, and I can't imagine they go season fifteen is China, then they go back to Palau for sixteen, mm-hmm. then seventeen they're in Gabon, then here in Tokyo, and it's wonderful for us watching. But I imagine the actual work. To get right. a different location every season um, is very costly. So, no, I, I get it. Just one of those fun things. Uh, Jeff, this is the first season. He's the executive producer, so he has a lot more control over hmm. uh, the storytelling and basically how everything happens. Uh, <laughs> a couple other fun facts from, like, the Token... By the way, I have a Token Sheen's Secrets video already out. Don't have to wait for it. Um, that has a ton of stuff. But, like, one of them was, like, the Tribal Council set. This was the third one they built. Really? I mean, you knew this already because I told you. So that was very sarcastic, really. But yes, <laughs> really. Um, yeah, like, like uh, they didn't get the permits for, like, they were, like, building on this one location. And I guess, like, the permits didn't go through. So they had to find another location. Mm. And then later on, that one got burned down. <laughs> so it was like, all right, well, I guess that, I guess it's really good that they didn't stay there because... What if there's like a middle tribal, like thunder just or lightning just? Is that what happened? It burned. I back believe lightning, lightning, yeah, caused a I fire. Mean, there was lots of rain that happened in this. Epi- there was season. lots of rain, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, you know, there were some storms. There was some storms. So, anyways, that was some fun things I remember off the top of my head. Um, so, I guess the beginning of the season. Let's talk about that because here we have for the first time in quite a while a sixteen-person cast, not eighteen, not twenty. 16. What do you think about this return back to going 16? I didn't notice. You didn't notice? <laughs> I didn't know it was smaller, I guess. It was definitely smaller. But I feel like that's because they had so many good characters or, you know, good cast members. Yeah. I wasn't necessarily thinking about, oh, you know, it feels like there's less people. I just, there was so much drama and so many things going on. I don't feel like it really detracted. I'm personally a fan of 18 player cast because. Thankfully, it only happened to one person this season, but when they have like, but even that, like that episode where Joe gets medevaced, mm-hmm. um, it's like, hmm, all right, there's no tribal. It's like kind of like we're just sitting around like talking about strategy, but like nothing can happen. It's kind of like, like part, like third of the episode is like nothing, like no, like nothing can happen, you know, because I mean, there's not, nobody else to be voted A medevac out. is pretty. No, the medevacs. I'm saying up to the medevac. nothing happens with the strategy, after the medev- I guess. After the medevac, we have like this yeah, third was- of this episode where nothing happens. I I'm don't. not start, trying to start. The, I'm, not, I'm just saying, like, when they have 18 players, they have more people to be voted sure. off. Okay. But if there's 16, once somebody is injured, that's the episode. Like, there is, they have nothing else because there's no extra people to be voted off. Well, obviously, off. you don't plan on someone getting medevac. Well, they do now. That's why there's like 20 player cast. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's why they have more people in the cast. It, plus, they get double tribals and stuff like that because this season, you know, there's no double tribals. I We just came off the backs of what? Vanuatu, Palau, Guatemala. Mm-hmm. We're like, all three of those seasons have like 
okay, both tribes are going to tribal council, which I'm not a massive fan of. Yeah, I don't really like that. But you're not going to get anything fair. like that with a 16 player cast. What's wrong with double tribals? Well, what's the point of having a challenge if you're both going to go tribal? I know one gets a reward too yeah, or reward. something. Yeah. I, know, I just don't like, I just think you're like fighting so hard for this game and then you still have to go to tribal. I, don't, I just never liked yeah. the double, double tribals. Sure. I, I am a fan of being able to earn your way through the pre-merge by winning challenges and not having to go tribal. Like I'm, I, I'm on my board with that. Um, so I, it's not like something they do, they often. do too often. Yeah. yeah. Of course, you have that weird one-time game changers where it's like everybody could vote for people in both tribes. Like this should never. Been I want to know if different. this is going to show my your age. No naivety, oh. I guess. Well, you're very but young, I want to know so. is this like one of the first um, seasons where there's not really a theme because token change isn't really a theme. The Brazilian Highlands. That was the theme. No, uh, I mean, if you're, what do you mean by theme? I guess let's be more specific. Like men versus women, or well. Yeah, I mean, just uh, so the I guess Empire. I guess I guess I just got done researching some uh, seasons for another script. So I I'm like thinking about the here's pirates, versus. the yeah. Pearl Islands, and then I'm thinking about yeah, here's versus villains, or blood Guatemala, versus Wallow, where it's Mayans, water, or well, I mean, like Guatemala. All the, so all the was, challenges are based around Mayans. right or themed around that or okay. and things like that. But there didn't seem to be necessarily like a I mean, I so I top of my head, thing. I cannot tell you if Gabon is all about africa i don't think it is like challenge wise they have sure, a lot of interesting challenges very first one right what do you mean very first one what are you saying that's the first season right gabon yeah season 17 oh never mind borneo is the first season <laughs> borneo sorry i was saying no borneo. i'm talking about the seasons that we just that okay. we've that we've kind of skipped over in our watch here season 12 is exile island very clear theme. Yeah, with that's Exile a theme Island. there. Mm. Thirteen is Cook Islands, where they separate everyone by race. We'll get there when we get there. Mm. So, <laughs> season fourteen, um, they were going to do the race thing, but then someone got medevaced the day before Survivor began, basically. So they didn't do it. They just did two mind. tribes out of four. So I don't think so that yeah, season theme, has theme, a theme. Theme or some sort I'm of saying twist. fourteen. I don't think has a theme. It has been quite oh, a while okay, since I've gotcha. watched it. 15, China. It's very much China at mm -hmm. all times. Okay. So I'm just walking us through here to see if you're right. I don't think you are because I think Gabon might be. I mean, Fiji, for, season 14, Fiji, I don't believe is themed. Uh, 16 is fans are favorites. Definitely yeah. that takes over. So 17. So, I mean, first, I mean, it's not. So it's the first <laughs> season since that we have that been That we have been watching. Okay. Because sure, we skipped have a, a bunch. Theme, but okay. <clears throat> you started with the Amazon where men versus women. Before men versus women, every season was just, we're at a location, we got 16 people. Okay. Let's okay. play Survivor. Kind of like this season in a lot of ways. Okay. So this is actually very much a classic Survivor season. A return. A return, a to, a return to form. Yeah. yeah gotcha. rena renaissance. It's the last 16 player season ever too. They don't ever do this again. Um, they uh, From here on out, it's always 18 or 20. And too many times it's see 20. i just don't mind the 16 i feel like you get to know people better mm -hmm. i feel like i don't know oh i know i'm with you but i only argue 18 because i can just imagine i just i know how much of a drag it is when somebody gets medevaced and then heck if oh Co no can't believe Co wrong had 18 people mary <laughs> like there was like three medevacs that season sure <laughs> well <laughs> if they had a 16 player cast that season <laughs> that would have been terrible <laughs> Anyway, right. so no. Um, anyways, all right. So that's uh, that's six player cast. So anyways, the season starts off with um, everyone's on their truck. Uh, coach doesn't know he's a dragon slayer yet, so he's not doing his warrior <laughs> poses. You know that that thing. Uh, for those listening, not that I have video of me doing it anyways, but just imagine Coach doing his warrior pose. Um, yeah, not doing that yet. But Jeff's like, all right, everyone, you're gonna vote someone. He doesn't say like out of the tribe, does he? He said, y'all need to vote for someone and they're not going to make the journey. Yeah, they're not going to make the journey with you. And like everyone's like so nervous and new. They don't like listen really. I mean, they might. I mean, I, I don't think they would change their votes. They're like all of a sudden vote for JT if no. they think what's really going to happen. Um, but yeah, so Timbira votes out. Do you remember? I know the two people were voted out. Okay. Uh, Sierra, all right? Yeah, Sierra. Yeah. And then uh, Sandy gets voted out of Jal mm -hmm. And so they don't have to go on this four... Did you say four-hour track? Yeah, they didn't say miles. Yeah, I said like hour. a four-hour track, I think. And they're all like, oh, four hours. And I'm like, I'm glad the show didn't like make a huge deal out of it since we just watched <laughs> we, Guatemala yeah. and the 11-mile hike 
was definitely the worst, and I don't think we'll ever be matched in any form. No, that was her. But I, I can as it shouldn't be. Yeah, that love <laughs> that love mile hike was too much for newbies. They shouldn't. They should shouldn't have done that. Um, <laughs> that was that was terrible. I mean, it was great for us to watch, but terrible for them. Sierra immediately already has strep throat. Is that what it was? She had strep throat. Yeah. Yes. Then later she said she had the flu. So I don't know. Yeah, she, she had one sick. or the other. Maybe she had both. Who knows. Sierra was sick is the point, though. And so they voted for her. But I don't know. It, like, I'm thinking about Tim Beer, and I'm like, I don't... I still think Sierra gets voted even if she doesn't look sick. Even if she's not, like... I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Who would they have... So let's think about this. Who would Aaron, they have voted for? You think Aaron would have been voted instead of Sierra? I think I'm Aaron just thinking of, yeah, who looks, like, weak or not capable. So we got Aaron. I don't personally don't think she would have been voted. Coach. I think I'm saying she may have got a few more votes. I, I, but Sierra was like the only one they voted for because she looks sick. I see, I see. Yeah, because <laughs> Debbie, I mean, Debbie is an older woman, but she did not look. No, she, she never looked like she was weak. She I looked guess. strong and fit. Yeah. Brendan Tyson. No, yeah, of course not. J- uh, no, Jerry is on. Yeah, Jerry, Candace. I don't know. It was, I think Sierra is just like she's super thin and she's small. It's just like who looks the least. And she capable? probably looked Sierra. really grouchy. Because yeah. <laughs> even when she's not sick, she was it's pretty true. grouchy yeah. <laughs> while she was there. It's just like her natural face movements. And a lot of people um, really like Sierra and were like asking, um, you know, why everyone hates Sierra. And I don't hate Sierra, but uh, frankly, Sierra just annoys me. Like, Which is so <laughs> funny because you love Coach. I don't mind Sierra. <laughs> I I can see how like in person maybe she'd be annoying, but yeah. I thought she actually added some good drama to the oh, show. No. Yeah, she's and she fine. had some good points like... But somebody was trying to figure out, like, there was a question that we're not going to really cover, but I'm kind of covering, I guess, where someone asked, like, why are people annoyed by Sierra? And it's like, I don't know, man. It's like when you get annoyed by somebody and they just annoy you. Like, it's not for everyone. But when when everyone is annoyed, the, yeah. there's some sort of That's true. underlying element that w- maybe we just don't see on TV. Yeah. I just think that um, with I think if everyone on the tribe, though, is saying this person annoys me, I don't really care for her, except for Brendan, because I think he was attracted to her as um, you see in the Ponderosa videos. Watch the Secrets of Token Cheese videos. They get a little uh, close. But anyways, um, when everybody's like, she annoys me, I mean, we're not living with her. We're only seeing her for like 15, 20 minutes out of three days. They're living with her for 72 hours every mm-hmm. episode. Like, every, I feel like everyone at some point is getting, getting annoyed by somebody. Like, yeah. I feel like everybody in the tribe is going to be... Well, yeah. Even, like, even JT, I'm sure, got on somebody's nerves at some point. Yes. You know, even the golden JT. boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I just... Uh, why is she annoying? I mean, it's something to ask everybody who's actually there. But, I don't know. I got a little annoyed watching her on TV. I didn't. That's fine. See, I think it's the difference because... When we get to Coach, it's flip flopped. Yeah. I love Coach, but you I'm are annoyed, so by, annoyed him. by him. You're so over him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Sandy gets voted out too, and she's like very upset with them. Like yes. she did not like she really thought she was voted out of the game. She thought this was a Palau. I mm-hmm. guess in a way, it's almost like Palau. Yeah. Where, but Palau, at least they had a day to get used to each other. Here, it's mm-hmm. just like. We haven't even They've done yet. this in one other season, haven't they? In Redemption Island, but I mean, sorry, in season twenty-seven, we're not there yet. Oh, I know. I'm just saying it's been done. <laughs> well, I guess at that point it hadn't been done. Talking yet. Talking about so. through eighteen. I know. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. So Sandy only knows if she's a fan of Survivor the first seventeen seasons, right? And this is only happened in Palau, if I recall. And in Palau, oh no, they went home. So, I mean, it's it's not an unfair assumption, but it is a little, I guess. I, I, I could not see Survivor knocking out 16 player cast down to 14 right off the bat. On the that first been day. Intense. Yeah, that would have been bad. Um, whereas in Palau, they had 20 mm. on purpose so they could knock out two. Right. Yeah. So anyways, um, Sandy's fun. I really do like Sandy, uh, especially that one morning where she woke up and she looked straight at JT and said, I'm feeling like a sex kitten today. Okay, Sandy. Well, there. <laughs> <laughs> she I don't know if JT knows the eye contact, but she was I looking right at him. He, his back was turned to her. I think. <laughs> but she was looking at him. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. So I guess let's run through like some of the cast stands up to us, and we'll just discuss them. And then after that, we'll discuss. Uh, we I have uh, quite a few questions for Patreon and YouTube. We'll cover those as well. Okay. So I know we kind of touched upon Sandy and Sierra. So. We'll, Unless you have more about them, I'm, I'm no, good to move on. I feel like they're both good TV. I like them okay. both for yeah, different no, reasons. Totally. 
Like somebody can annoy you even slightly and be like, well, they're making good TV. Whereas some people are complete duds. There aren't a lot of duds in this cast. Spencer, for example, 18 years old in this season, the youngest player to ever play at this point, I believe, uh, I believe will, I know you don't may not recall him from season 33 is like younger. Technically they're both 18. Right. But, uh, or Will's like, no, he like just turned 18. It's something ridiculous where he like mm-hmm. beat him by months. Point is though, Spencer at this point, like first 18 year old player to play. And I know I told you this during the season, but fun fact, um, for those who remember Mike Barassi in Samoa season 19 was supposed to be on the season. And then I guess he had, um, what is it called? The sleeping sleep apnea. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, well, we can't put you out there. So they replaced him like the day before day of with Spencer, who was mm-hmm. an alternate. So crazy. You enough. think he was trying to hide that he had sleep apnea? Yeah, I don't. Just kind of I, fell through the I was cracks? reading Mike Barassi's interview, and I wasn't sure, but he did say I wasn't sure if like he was hiding it or if just like Survivor decided this is too much of a risk, we're not gonna take oh, it. Okay, yeah. Whereas like maybe sleep apnea wasn't like there wasn't as much information in 08. Sure. or maybe if he was on like Borneo, they wouldn't even have cared at all. You know, right. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying like sleep apnea is not like a. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it depends on how bad it is. Right. Um, like I can take, you know, I have sleep apnea and I can take a nap and not die. <laughs> so, so I'm doing okay. But I do, the mask does help a lot for that. So anyways, he got uh, Mike Brassy, how he got in Samoa for those wondering. He got, um, jaw. He actually got jaw surgery, surgery to fix his sleep apnea. I guess that's what was wrong for him. And he was on the very next season. And then he's like, Medivacs, episode two, in a challenge. Uh, yeah. yeah. He was overworking himself. So, yeah, just crazy. I, I can't imagine how much money he spent to get on, basically to get on Survivor. And then to go out like episode two or three of Samoa so, from, from being medevaced. What's up? But he is a non-token gene. So let's get back no, to No, no, no. But I think that was like, that was like for those wondering like, how well, because I said how he didn't go on the season. It's like, well, how is he on the very next season? Like, you know, sure. six, seven months later. Yeah. So, all right. So, that's. Uh, do you have anything about Spencer? That's really all I had because that's all you really talked about. Was I how don't young he was. really remember much about him. No. That's okay. I was surprised he was 18, I guess. The pre merge people, I think there are some interesting people. Like, I like Jerry, but Jerry was a non factor in the story and he got sick and then they voted him out. Like, yeah. I like Jerry, but like, there's not really much to talk about with Jerry. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, let's move on to the people in the merge. Joe, who got medevaced. That knee injury, I feel like I've seen that from somebody else. I feel like Neil in season 32 had that as well. I don't like to jump ahead too much, but I feel like the only other time I can think of when somebody had that like exact same thing, mm-hmm. that knee like Yeah, I'm volcano. surprised it doesn't have happen more with us as often as people yeah. get injured and scraped up. But really, if you just take care of it and clean it, mm-hmm. it should be okay. No, so that's only guys who have had that issue. Yeah. <laughs> don't care. Of the, don't take care of their wounds and try to yeah. be a man or it's something. It's like, oh, it looks cool. Yeah. I don't know. But like, when are you... Okay, so let's imagine. Where are you, how are you supposed to clean it, though? Boiled water. Oh. But the, okay, so you get injured at the challenge. That's where you got injured. At. You get injured at the challenge. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much time it takes to go from going from the challenge back to camp, or, boiling water. Or... It's like, by then, is it like... I we've seen people who are at a challenge get injured and they get, just get wrapped up or something sent back to camp. Just let let the medical we team, have. yeah, let the medical team wrap your wound, take care of it real quick, so you don't have to be. Are you thinking of modern survivor? Because medical modern survivor is a little different than maybe. I just remember seeing like some people getting injured at a challenge and then you don't really see it, but when they get back to camp, they have like a oh yeah or yeah like it's not focused on the episode, but right. like all of a sudden mm-hmm. they have like a band aid or yeah. Whatever. Yeah, that's Mars Survivor, Mary. Okay. I don't know if you remember, if you recall, Bobby John nearly passed out in Guatemala and only Margaret was there to help him. Yes, I so. do recall this. <laughs> I'm just... It's a little different back then. You asked how if, yeah. if someone... I'm just saying, okay, in Modern Survivor, yeah. just ask for somebody to help. If you don't have Modern Survivor, I guess... <laughs> well, now you Joe would. Joe should have... Yeah. No, it, I mean, you don't have to like boil it immediately or it's going to get but infected. But I'm saying like he may I'm not, not a doctor. Camp, back to camp for like another hour and a half. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I didn't know you were a medical I'm expert. I'm not a medical expert. I'm learning expert. something new every day. Well, I did play in the woods <laughs> as a kid a lot. Oh, okay. Tell Several me more. minutes from my home. Several minutes. <laughs> yes. That's not an hour and a half, Mary. No, it's not an hour and a half. <laughs> not even close. I'm just saying blood poisoning doesn't set in. Sure. Immediately. Oh, is that what it was? Blood yeah. poisoning? They were afraid that he had infection in his blood. Oh. And if it if it reached his blood, it would I don't connect kill the infection him. with blood poisoning, but 
Yeah. I'm sure that's an infection what it is. in your blood. Your blood's poisoned. Okay. Your blood's well, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I am not a medical expert for those wondering. You can also, <laughs> this is something I probably would have done, is yeah. heat up a knife and sterilize it, cut Oof. the wound open, and let it drain. Well, where's Joe going to get any of this stuff it. from? We- they have a knife at camp. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Anyways, we're getting too much into detail about this. <laughs> you, you were like ready. You should have been on You should have been on the Murder Tribe. You could have helped Joe. Cause, <laughs> probably. Or you, or, sorry, you should have been on Jalapau. If he would have let somebody help him. He got injured in Jalapau. Man, Mary, you should have been there. No, Go I back. liked Joe. You could have been the youngest woman on the show at 18. You could have gone back and, and played and helped Joe out. Was I 18 when this came out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when they shot it, you were 18. <laughs> Not to get too much in the weeds, but okay. Ma- Mary's a little, uh, she's a little older. Not me, though. I'm 20. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, Brendan, the next one. Brendan, by the way, for those who aren't in the know, once again, I think this is in the Secrets video. A lot of things are. Go ahead. Oh, I just realized Joe wasn't on the jury. Like he should have no, been on the jury. He made but the merge. He, right. Yeah. Oh, but he was first first boot technically. Well, yeah, this is just like in Guatemala, Palau. Right. They don't want to. It's like you make the merge, but you don't make the jury. But you don't it's make not, the jury. Yeah. I forgot. Okay. Now in, di- in other seasons, yeah. But he, for some reason, the 16 player ones, it's like always first person voted out does not make the, mm, the okay. jury because jury is seven. So. Right. Sorry. Go ahead about Brendan. That's okay. Uh, Brendan um, created the company. You may have heard of this bare naked. Mm-hmm. They make snacks and whatnot. You see advertisements for them on TV if you watch television um, <laughs> and not like just stream stuff. But yeah, if you watch television, they have still have ads. So Brendan sold them though way back in like 07, 08 for $80 million. Mm. So he, unlike, unlike some other people who tell stories, Brendan actually is an entrepreneur and actually is rich <laughs> or was. I don't know where he's currently. I'm sure he's still doing great. Um, I think I found him on LinkedIn. Don't ask even how I got <laughs> that far. I think it was looking up his name that came up. Anyway, so no, he's he's doing fine. So uh, yeah, he made, a, he made a crap ton of money around this time on Bare Naked selling them. But not as much as he could have, I think, if he had kept them. But who knows? But way more than a million dollars on Survivor. But yeah, yeah, that's the kind of point. So he's on Survivor. <laughs> And he just got off the heels of selling Bare Naked, by the way, because it happened before Survivor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I kind of get why he doesn't really care if he wins the game or not. <laughs> well, I didn't get the feeling that he didn't care. Well, because I think to him, it really was more about the game than yeah, the money. But yeah. sure, he wasn't like fighting for his survival. No, or, he was know. like, remember, <laughs> he goes on that reward with JT and he's like, I was up all night thinking to myself, how can I get JT yes. to the end and win? Yeah. And it's like, that's where like, everybody likes JT up to that point, but that's the first like time we hear somebody like love JT. And right. then from there, it's like, Taj like, and oh, he I just love met JT. Him. Yeah, and he just met yeah. him. Dude, JT, everyone loved JT. Everyone loved JT. There was not a single person. I mean, there may have been because if somebody was naysaying JT, they may not have just shown it. Why would they? True, because yeah. that you hardly ever get... In a, in a cast on Survivor, so yeah. many people just like in love with the winner. Yeah. Usually, and I know Modern Caesar the chosen is one. What different, can I say? but he was just special apparently. Yeah. So. Anyways, Brendan, we're kind of. I just kind of thought, I didn't know that he yeah. had sold Bare Naked right before this. Oh, I just thought he was kind of like not uh, strategic. He just the, seemed like he made some dumb decisions. The bigger story with Brendan is that he made the Exile Alliance with Taj. Yeah. And <laughs> they have this great alliance, great plan, and it just falls apart. And I think he, you can tell me if you agree or disagree. I think it basically fell apart because of bad communication by Brendan and Taj's part, both of them. Right. Brendan didn't communicate with Taj as soon as she came back to camp. Mm-hmm. He said it's because he was Once trying to hit the merge, trying to make sure that no one knew that they had a secret alliance. But well, it'd like, been what, like four days before they finally yeah, talked. Yeah, man, like they didn't talk until so four days So in that days four later. days, Coach ca- grabs JT yeah. and so therefore grabs Steven. So therefore yeah. grabs Taj. You Coach know? is uh, shockingly <laughs> actually doing better gameplay than Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> so his, cl- his gameplay was a little no. lazy. Ga- yes. Maybe that's the word for it. Because it's like bad communication, but it's like. Why isn't he like just talking to us? Like nobody's nobody in this game. And by the way, suspicious. If you go and talk to somebody out somewhere, it's not like, oh, these two people go off by themselves. They're probably looking for an idol and like, <laughs> you they know, have an alliance. This yeah. season is nothing like that. Two people can go off by themselves and nobody cares. Right. So he totally could have just grabbed Taj, talked to her. You know, it wouldn't have been suspicious at all. Or the whole exile lines could have. No, that might have been suspicious because two Jalapaju, two Timbera. But him and Taj could have talked. Like everyone's talking. Right. You know. 
it's not that big of a deal. I mean, Coach is down by the creek talking to JT probably for hours about his amazing exploits and how he much he loves JT. And how yeah, much a, I do think people expect that of Coach, yeah. not necessarily Brandon, but but I'm saying that like it was still a little this is a season where you totally if it seemed like you could get away with one on one conversations at any time, right? People are like unless it's like before the vote. People aren't like really, sure. People aren't like, oh man, we got to target them. They probably have an idol or anything yeah. like that, like we get now. So it was really lazy and Brendan, but it's also Taj. I did notice um, once Taj had that blow up where she thought she was gonna be voted out, and she like kind of blew up on everybody in the river, mm-hmm. and she, she like got into Joe, like Joe, how come you never talked to me? Fair point. Why? Mm-hmm. Do, why hasn't he? The, you know, there's only an eight person tribe, and they're down to like five at that point. And Joe's like, well, it's a two way street. You haven't talked to me, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, like Taj is right, but. Joe says that. I'm like, hmm. So I kept that in my, my, my brain. We get to the merge. Taj also had four days to grab Brandon. Right. Yeah. She is just as much part of this Exile Alliance as he is. Right. So the fall of the Exile Alliance is on both of them, in my opinion. It's not just Brandon. I feel like Brandon gets all the heat. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think Taj obviously probably could have done more, talked more to Joe, to her tribe. Well, Taj whatever. could just grab Brandon and be like, but hey. when I the one thing about her coming into the merge tribe to Forza, mm-hmm. they're they are like the lowest of the low at this point. Yeah, I feel like and wow, well, that should have motivated. Yeah, her to go talk that's to Brendan, that's but, why. Like Brendan could be lazy because technically, Timbera had the numbers. Right, and he didn't know they're all going to flip on him. Yeah, they all at that point they were all like, let's get Sierra, which is like the the running theme for three episodes. Mm-hmm. Let's all get Sierra out. You know. Everyone's but ready that to turn was Brenda's, but then Brendan's became, ally. Doesn't matter. Brendan became the dragon. I know. Anyway, so <laughs> moving on. They're both lazy. That the, the this is the ep- uh, no, it was the Joe episode, I believe, where Brendan becomes the dragon. So the whole episode where the one where Joe gets medevaced, and then this one, they're like, we got to get Brendan out. Brendan's the dragon, is what Coach says. Mm-hmm. Coach is like all of a sudden become the dragon slayer out of left field. I know we haven't got to Coach yet, but it's kind of related. Because when Brennan is really talking about coach, you are the dragon, and I am the dragon slayer. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's so beautiful. I I don't mind that. Shed I think a it's tear funny when he said it. But anyways, anyways, yeah, Brendan um definitely didn't have the motivation. I feel like to really win. Why do you think that JT and Steven and Taj kind of swung over to coach like this? Brand new alliance with Coach versus sticking with the Exile. Was it just because Brandon didn't go well, talk to them? Well, as you said, Coach talked to them. Yeah. And Brendan literally took till day four to even start anything. And Coach is like, let's get out Brendan. And they're like, sure, he's on Timbira. That's okay. not us. And I, I think it was kind of like whoever came and talked to them first. And like, and co- of course, they just met Coach. They don't know Coach is like kind of nuts. Right. And also is has this like massive ego you have to stroke they don't know that yet all they know is that this guy who seems like he's you know maybe he's a little cuckoo but he's like saying let's be honest charlie let's you know jt by the way i think up through up until the merge hadn't lied that we saw it all and then the merge hits and he's just like lying left and right to coach <laughs> constantly that's probably yeah. the person he lies to the most coach which is why it's so funny why when coach comes back the next time he says slay everyone and trust no one and i feel like the trust no one's the new part because of jt because JT totally bamboozled Coach all season. Yeah. Yep. Start to finish of his relationship with J- Coach, he was bamboozling him. So that's Brendan. Next is Tyson, future oh, Tyson. Uh, survivor winner. I mean, if you're this far in this podcast, you're going to get spoiled on some stuff. <laughs> just the way it is. Tyson one day will win another season. But uh, here, <laughs> Tyson's just a goofball mm-hmm. who is making smart remarks. And it's funny all the way up until he really lays into Sierra, he- I feel like. He really, and that's me as someone who isn't even that big of a fan of Sierra. I thought he went way too far. Yeah, he's young. Yeah, he's he was not. Well, he was twenty nine, so he wasn't that. Was young. he? Yeah. Oh man, okay, that's what I was mind. trying to tell you. I'm like, we were watching. I'm like, I think he's thirty here. He's thirty. No, he's twenty. I mean, he's twenty nine. Like Tyson wasn't. Like, I really thought he was like twenty. No, okay. I, now it seemed like it. Tyson, like, it's almost like he has this. He has the smarts of a twenty nine year old, but like. The immaturity in a lot of ways of yeah a because you could tell like he tried to hide it I'm pretty sure he tried to hide his strategy and stuff like that yeah, but you could totally. tell he understood players he understood what was going on mm-hmm. he knew what good decisions would he be he caught and on stuff to like Brendan that. making an alliance with the other side yes, when nobody else was nobody talking else, about it mm-hmm. yeah but he just I don't know he just didn't the personal side was not there for him at all in this yeah. game 
you Who know, did it's he really fun. connect with? Coach? Coach, which he didn't really connect with Coach. He just, Coach no, latched onto him and yeah. he just like, ah, oh, sure, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, what, maybe Debbie. He didn't like Aaron. He didn't like Sierra. No. He obviously didn't like Brendan because he was part of the whole Let's Get like Rid of Brendan. Brendan train. So at that point, yeah, who did he like? Because Candace and Jerry were already gone from Timbira. It was just Debbie and Coach really were the only two here. Um, well, the rest of Timbira is Brendan, Tyson, Sierra, Debbie, Coach, and Aaron. Yeah. So yeah. So just those two. Yeah. I feel like he relied too much on yeah. his humor and stuff to get him along, but a lot of people he didn't was appreciate some of his humor, or he went too far yeah. and stuff. So. He just hadn't figured out the social part of the game yet, but he was really funny. He was still fun to watch. Yes. I I enjoyed seeing his st- strategy in this one because, like, I just think of Tyson, think of the goofball, but yeah. I forget that he actually is really smart. Yeah, he's not an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. And even when he... Uh, <laughs> his most idiotic move is not this season. Let's put it that way. Of all the times he plays, it's not this season. Um, but we'll get on that one. we get on that when we get to that season. But Tyson, yes, shows some promise, but since he is not gonna make it to the end of the game he's not gonna win they don't really have to show all they this strategy they just show yeah. and like okay this moment stands out mm-hmm. and i think it's something we kind of forget is like typically if unless you're the winner they're only gonna show if you have like big moments now if you're the winner they're like okay now we have to unless unless the winner has a bunch of big moments like they're a tony or something um they they have to like okay where's the little moments like what are the little yeah. things you're doing because we have to show how they won because even somebody like Danny Boatwright in Guatemala, like you don't see any big moments except for when she gets shut out. But then like along the way, like the, but if you go back and you watch and you're looking for it, there's like a ton of little things she does. Ton of little things. Mm-hmm. But like there are only like one or two big things. So and so for if you're not a winner, if you're like Tyson here, even though he probably made a bunch of like he could have made a bunch of great little small moves. Who knows? Sure. But they're not really focused on that. Right. Because he's not. He's only going to be. He's going to be like That's the second juror. That's not the story. Yeah. So I think I think it's something to remember as survivors. It's all about storytelling, and that's why certain players get shown a lot more than others. So uh, Sierra, we've talked about Debbie, school principal. I feel like I didn't really. Shockingly enough, I feel like I didn't really get to know Debbie. Am I do. I, do you feel like you know her? Yeah. I feel like she's a school principal. She loves kids. She definitely loves kids. But like, what else do we really know about her? I mean, if you want facts, I can't give you like no, no, she no, lives like, here I mean, like, or just anything, anything. No, I mean, what did you get to know about her? I feel like she's a very confident woman. Okay. She likes to be in charge of things, okay. but she's also very nurturing mm-hmm. and likes to take care of other members of the tribe. If she gets caught in a lie. She she gets caught explodes. in a lie. She doesn't know what to do yes. <laughs> and just starts crying yep. to try and turn it away. Yeah. I really liked a lot of her gameplay until the whole Sierra situation because mm-hmm. I I mean, at that point, I don't think it was necessary to keep going with the lie. But at the same time... Yeah, Sarah didn't have the idol. Right. So. It, it didn't really matter. <laughs> I think she did really well. Um, and she was smart. She made good decisions. I think she kind of helped coach a lot as far as guiding him through stuff. And and helping... I was kind of wondering who was helping coach. There's no way coach was doing everything by himself. No, it was definitely Debbie. It was Debbie. Maybe it Tyson. Tyson. I mean, for a while, maybe it was Tyson. Maybe. But I think it really was Debbie. I think Debbie was more of the brains behind right the operation. Mm-hmm. And she kind of helped smooth out things between but, Coach and the mm, other players, too. Maybe that's why Coach... Huh. You know, that's an interesting way to think about it. Maybe Debbie was was his right-hand woman. I hadn't really think, thought about that she before. She definitely was, from what I could see. Man, this is why you're here. Mm-hmm. You see things I don't. Yeah, apparently. I'm so focused on storytelling and antics. And you're you're like, so focused on Coach and his ridiculousness. Okay. Well, and I'm <laughs> like, how has he lasted this long? <laughs> Once Coach oh, he has a good sl- woman by his side. the first... The, oh, well, Coach is the next player on this list. So let's talk about Coach. Sure. Because the first seven episodes... Coach is just Benjamin Wade. He's not really Coach. Like, he, I guess he's Coach. Sorry, he's not Dragon Slayer yet. So... He's like, he's kind of n- not normal. I guess normal is not really the word, but he's not cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs yet. Mm-hmm. Coach is just doing things like, oh, the storm. Do you got someone asked him, do you think it's going to it's going to hit us? And he's like, he's like, like, he's like feeling the wind or whatever. And he's like, no, it's going to go right past <laughs> us over there. And then, of course, the show immediately cuts to the storm, hitting them as hard as it can um, and them all looking sad in the shelter. So. Um, that's stuff like that. But I guess the most dragon slayer crazy moment we witnessed in the pre-merge, and I'm sure you could tell me what it is, 
is when Aaron finds out that Jerry's going home instead of him. So what happens? Oh, the evil smile thing. Evil is that what you're talking about? smile. Yeah. Because Aaron realizes Jerry's going home and not her. So you can maybe you can recap what happens. Well, if there there are a bunch of them are down in the water. I don't yep. remember who all. And a bunch of Timberis is right. Yeah, Timberis. Like I think you know Tyson probably brought it up or something, but about how Jerry really, really wasn't feeling well, yeah. wasn't doing well. And they basically kind of decided you know it should be Jerry, mm-hmm. and so. Aaron, you do see Aaron's face. I don't know if it's just the editing or what, but it does look like Aaron is relieved. Does she have a huge grin across her face? No, but she does. Looks she have a slight grin? A slight grin, yeah. And she kind of like she kind of like has her hand up by her mouth, you know, kind of like trying to hide it, but she does smile. Yeah, and she looks relieved because she thought because she going thought nice. she was going home. She and with she's Candace, also the previous tribal council, right? Yeah, she's also not good at hiding her emotions. So she no. just as soon as she feels something, you see it on her face. So then they all leave except Coach and Tyson. And Coach is just, all he says is her face or something like that. And Tyson's Mm -hmm. like, what are we even talking about? And so Coach reenacts the moment. Although he's like, as soon as she found out it was Jerry and not her, her face went like this. And it was like. And then Coach reenacts the moment, but like like a cartoon. It looks like like the most sadistic (laughs) clown killer (laughs) <laughs> that you've ever seen it was ridiculous yeah way over the top yep and i think it was just because he didn't get what he wanted he wanted aaron to go home so his plans were messed up and he didn't like oh it. I, that's 100 percent it yeah. like coach in this season is seems so simple to understand it's like usually we get players and it's like there's complex like they're not telling us all their thoughts coach tells us all of his thoughts yeah he, it's all filtered through coach's brain but coach's brain's basically kind of childlike in a lot of ways when it yes. comes to hit the way he operates in this season I'm not saying coach is a child I'm saying mm-hmm. a lot of the, how he operates is it's almost like so simplistic it's like it's kind of like a child like you can kind of predict what's going to happen in it like this coach you can put in certain situations and know how he's going to react like i feel like yeah, i could take him probably i could take him out of the season put him in our season this coach not the other not the rt seasons and then know exactly how he would react to something like that's almost like it's it's but it's so funny it's so funny. Yeah, he's like a cartoon doing that evil smile. Mm-hmm. Um, what is? I don't. I don't know if this is someone's question. So if it is, sorry. We'll. I guess we'll just not cover it. But anyways, what is your favorite coach moment? I know you're not a big fan, <laughs> but what is your favorite moment from him? Uh, I don't. Do you're talking about like a favorite crazy thing he does? Anything. Anything besides being voted out. Anything. <laughs> anything he says or does i don't like anything you like he says anything there's nothing he ever does that you like no oh man oh people are gonna be riding in the streets <laughs> good go ahead <laughs> um well since you asked me the same question uh you didn't but <laughs> yes <laughs> what is your favorite question, moment guys. uh has to be the amazonian story mm-hmm. amazon so um for those listening uh, I have it all transcribed. And by all transcribed, I mean I listened to the stupid Amazonian story and I typed it out word for word what he said. And uh, I think w- the only way to properly treat this story. Oh, no, I do have oh. a favorite moment. Sorry, okay. be- before we get to the story. All right. When Coach said the poem at Tribal Council. Yes, thank he you. He wrote a poem for Tribal Council. That was so sweet. Mary okay. pretends like she's not I'm this massive fan of Coach. I'm not a fan of Coach. But the whole season, the whole season, Mary, you were you were laughing. Sure, he until makes the me very laugh, end, and then you start getting really annoyed. But sometimes he would make me laugh, but only because it was so awkward. You had to laugh. <laughs> laughter like like kept like healed you is what you're saying yes you're like oh it's the only thing that keeps me from going insane watching coach yes okay well all right i'm pulling up his uh his story now that i transcribed um, apparently i have to i put it on google drive and this is very interesting for those listening and now i'm downloading <laughs> this. what i am working on it okay, okay. i'm working on coach's it coach's poem was good <laughs> coach's poem was i good. wonder if you played all right so it. what we're gonna do here i have it pulled up what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the story okay. and we're going to figure out what parts seem believable and what parts seem like they're exaggerated. I mean, they all seem like they're exaggerated, I guess. But what parts seem like, OK, this probably happened and what parts are like, there's no way this happened. OK, I think it's a fun game we can play. All right. So let's let's set up his Amazonian story properly, because mm-hmm. I kind of forgot about this. So I went back and transcribed it. 
So because Joe just got medevaced, mm-hmm. everyone was being quiet around the fire. So Coach shares a story about no matter how bad things get, he says there are things that can make it worse. So right. <laughs> I guess his goal, well, his goal here is then by telling the story, he's like, guys, I know right now we're all sad. We're sitting around the campfire. No one's really talking. And things seem like they suck. Like, they're... But things can get worse. So let me tell you the story <laughs> about times things got worse to me. I, I, that's basically how he describes it. Right. Um, and he says that only three people in the world know this story. I'm guessing he's one of the three. I don't know if he means three others <laughs> or himself is included. But regardless, three to four people know this sure. story. Um, and I have, I, I after I finish this story, we talk about it. I have some follow-up information on this, so. All right, um, all right, so I'm I'm quoting Coach here. I was airlifted in. Do we believe this? Did he take a plane in? Sure. I believe he was airlifted in. I can believe that he was airlifted in. All right, so he says, I had a military helicopter. Military helicopter actually dropped me off a couple feet from the ground up in the Peruvian border where the Amazon supposedly starts, and it was real rapidy. He does say rapidly. I didn't make that word up. <laughs> so do we believe that a military, not just dropped off, but a military helicopter dropped him off? Sure. Why not? I don't know. You, you buy can that? You, can you hire a, a military Okay. Helicopter? Well, that's a great question because that's what Brendan asked. Brendan asked, how much does it cost to get a military, to, uh, sorry, how much does it cost to get a military copter to drop coach in? Coach says free because he pulled some no, strings. No, I don't believe it was free. <laughs> But he pulled some strings. Okay. Well, I don't believe it was free, but I believe he could have gotten a helicopter that may or may not have one time been in a military to mm, take him there. So like, so like an old, yeah. like an old military helicopter. To be fair, he is not in America, so the military hel- helicopter could have been from any country. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we believe that he was airlifted in, and they. Yeah. Now, what I do think is missing from the story, and I'm sure the story is a lot longer than what we heard on TV, is why? Why is he going? To Doesn't be he just in? want to break the record of the record of what canoeing down the Amazon? He didn't or say, that. Did he say that. I know oh. he didn't say that. I thought they said. That I mean, at, at the end. Point. All right. So I'm just saying, think about that. Why? Why is Coach even doing this? But it's okay. We'll get there. Um, okay. So his next thing is, I had an 18 foot kayak. Believable? I believe this. Sure. Okay. No, we're going through every part of the story. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whether it's believable or not. So, so far, we believe that he was airlifted in. It was probably in an old retired military helicopter. Did he get it for free? Questionable. Questionable. I mean, I can I can definitely guess that Coach has... He, he might have some... He might have a friend or something. So, I can, I can believe... We can believe this so far, it sounds like. It was real rapidy. It didn't really cover that. I guess we can believe this real rapidy, even though it's not a word. The river. Sure. Okay. Mary looks so annoyed by it right now, by the <laughs> way. For anyone wondering why she's not really talking, I'm having to carry this uh, Carry this right now. Hey, I'm just waiting for the next coach saying. All right. Uh, okay. So we're right after the 18-foot kayak. He says, I was paddling early one morning, and I just felt like I'm being watched. I look over, and I see some indigenous people that are sitting there creeping through the bush. At first, I counted six or seven of them. Believable. Yeah. <laughs> so far, you do not believe this? Yeah, I believe that. You believe this. Why would there not be people in the trees that are Creeping from around the bush that are watching Peru. coach? Yeah, why okay. not? I don't believe that. All right. Now they, now they were probably four, four and a half feet tall. No, I don't believe that. Okay. So you don't believe they were all approximately midgets? No, I don't all believe right. that. Okay. All right. And they've got their arrows, they've got their bows and arrows, sorry, they've got their arrows, they got their bow and arrows drawn, they jerk me out of the kayak, they tie me up, they tie my hands behind my back, they tie my feet, they drag me into the hut, they tie me to the stake, and they take turns beating me with this club. No. Okay. So you believe that, here's what really happened. Coach is paddling down, he got airlifted in, he has his 18-foot kayak that appeared out of thin air, he's in it, he's going down the river, he sees some indigenous people in the bush... And he just moves on with his life and then he just keeps going down the river. Yeah, as he's paddling, the sun's really hot on his head and he starts imagining what would happen if I got captured by those natives? What would I do? And then later that night, he uh, fell asleep and dreamed about it and then the next day he believed it happened. Dang, <laughs> Mary. That was cold. Um, okay. so Just my opinion. <laughs> all right. All right. That's true. All right. Um, okay. So 
we do not. So you do not believe he was tied to a stake and then was beaten no. with the club. All right. He says, I don't know how long it lasts. So let's pretend then that this really that so far this really has happened. Otherwise, the rest of the story is just not believable. Well, yeah, this is just okay. Okay, the rest of the story. <laughs> let's is go not through the rest of the story. Is what I'm saying, anyways. <laughs> okay. All right. I <laughs> know you wanted the pain to end, but we're halfway through. I don't know how long it lasted. Sometimes I blacked out. Sometimes I just went to a faraway place. I knew they were about ready to kill me. Do you believe they're going to kill Coach Mary? Yeah. Are we saying people? that this is really Let's happening say at this Coach- point? <laughs> well, sure. If someone grabs you, ties you up, and starts beating you, they're probably going to kill you. Okay. All right. I don't know how he would know that, but I guess he's like kind of like reading their body movements. Stuff. Well, we we know later on. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're, we know, know later on going. that he understands their language. Oh, no, I was going to get there later. Okay, sorry. Oh. I'm just tell- well, I'm just telling you, apparently, <laughs> no, 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 stop, stop, stop. he gonna understands get, their language. We're going to get there later. <laughs> okay, they pull out a knife and start sharpening on a stone. All right. Thank okay. you. Don't go ruining where we're going. <laughs> all right. So he says, I got blah, blah, blah. I got. In- okay. So, all right. So he knew they were about to kill him. So, coach, now. Before he knew they were about to kill him, what is he doing? He's just tied to the stake. He's right? just blacking out. He's just blacking out, happy place. getting beaten by a club, tied to a stake. And then he's like, oh no, they're going to kill me. So here's what Coach says. I finally wore through that rope and I slipped out the back. How did Coach wear through the rope? Did he get it untied? Did his hands just slip out? Is that what he's saying? Because he wore through the rope sounds to me like... He was doing something well, so much that the he rope... He was tied to a stake. Yeah. So he was just rubbing the rope against, against the... Against the stake. The rough wooden stake, you know, and it... And then eventually it cut it. Yeah. So he could escape. Okay. All right. Uh-huh. While everyone was busy This is what I mean. Like, there's the probably knife. way more details, but like they had to cut it down for TV. And I slipped out the back. I got in the kayak and I dipped it in the water and paddled like hell. Now, question on the kayak thing. Did When they took him, they just left the kayak on the shore, I guess. Sure. They didn't really care about they that. They didn't need a kayak. I guess I can believe... No, that, I, can, I guess I, I believe, wouldn't believe that at no. all. You don't believe that if they. I mean, maybe coach? they tie if they if they had other boats or if they had a place to tie it up. Then sure, maybe. But I don't believe they just like left it. I will say, okay, so here's what this sounds like. He was remember he started this whole adventure early in the morning. Yes. And I don't know how late in the day these well, people. It's like night now or something. Right? But it definitely sounds like it's night now. Like how yeah. else would he escape and slip out the back? Well, so this is a couldn't. whole. He's been beaten all day. He couldn't. He's Even if this was a real scenario, I don't believe he slipped out the back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So he got in the kayak, he dipped in the water, and he paddled like hell. I paddled so hard, my hands started bleeding. I just can't describe the feeling of being stalked by another human being. They, All right. So then that's kind. Of, that's the end of his main story. Mm-hmm. Then he gets starting to ask some questions. Brian asked about the military helicopter. Um, he tells me it pulled some strings. And then do you remember how the next part gets led into? Because you were trying to tell me earlier. No, basically, he's just talking about like, well, why did you go? Or yeah, yeah. Well, it, what did they? What did the military? Why did the military take you? Or something. It wasn't like that. super clear. Yeah, yeah. Cause it doesn't. Because you <clears throat> said a military helicopter brought him in, doesn't mean the military brought him yeah. in. But I do. So basically, though, for some reason, National Geographic was aware that Coach was going down there mm-hmm. to do this kayaking trip. So he says they were just ecstatic, ecstatic that I wanted to come down there. National Geographic contacted me and say, said, we want to come with you. And I said, no, this trip is about me being on my own. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, I haven't really said what to anything so far, but what? <laughs> I don't oh, know that's why that's what the... gets you? Uh, I mean, uh, if you had a man who genuinely wanted to yeah. paddle the entire Amazon from its source to its completion. Yes, that was what that was the point of the story. That's not what he said, though. He never said that. He said he got airlifted to the head yes. of the Amazon okay. with source. Sure. From context, we understand that he wants to paddle the entire Amazon. I, uh, I mean, Coach would probably say that, but I'm not sure if that's actually what was going to happen. No, I'm, I don't know if that's what the No, I mean, like, happened. I don't know if it's even I'm what the game I'm saying in the was. context of his crazy story. Okay. Yeah, sure. If I heard about a man who was going to paddle in a canoe mm-hmm. by himself, a kayak, yeah. a kayak, whatever, the entire length of the Amazon, sure, maybe National Geographic would do a story on it. I don't know. But so that part is slightly believable to me. I believe. And I would believe that coach would say no. Okay. So it's all let, about. No, I don't. Because he has a very big yes. ego. So he wouldn't want let's a story. Let's pretend the National Geographic really did contact him. And I'm not saying they didn't. But let's not question the validity of that. Here's what I think would happen for real. They would contact him. Be like, hey, we're interested in doing a story about this journey. Mm-hmm. The one that you said where he's now going down the entire Amazon that he didn't really say earlier. But mm-hmm. let's say it's really what he was doing. And coach says, 
Oh, absolutely. I, as a warrior, I would love to be in National Geographic, you know. I'm sure you wouldn't say the warrior part. And so they're like, okay, great. And then what happened is they decided not to. Yeah. They're like, no, that's they political. talked to him more, got to know more, and realized Coach might be a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Mm-hmm. And they're not sure if they want to do a whole story featuring him. Or maybe they didn't want to go down t- the entire Amazon or whatever. Like, I don't know. Maybe they had a better story that month. Um, so Coach has now changed the story from National Geographic, Geographic Contact Me. I said yes. And then they pulled out to they contact me. And I told them, no, this trip is about me. That's why yeah. f- that sounds, that more, sounds like, more like that sounds more like Coach for, in this season. So the story isn't completely done, though. At Tribal Council. Jeff's asking about campfire stories, knowing full and well that at one point coach told some crazy story that <laughs> because, of course, Jeff gets told, hey, you got to ask about this at tribal council. Mm-hmm. So he asks, and Taj brings up the Amazonian story and he's like, Jeff's like, oh, what? And then coach is like, well, yeah, at tribal coach claims to have toned down the story, the story that we heard, because he thinks if he tells them that the tribe is and I am, uh, I am making the language less here but that the tribe is looking at his butt and talking about eating his butt so he tries to keep his stories pg-13 is what he says mm-hmm. he says if he told him that he you know he wasn't sure how they'd react but he tells them that now so well you know, obviously because he thought of it later and that would have been a better addition to the story <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but i that's out of all i don't know like it seems like the further the story got along like the more like was this Ridiculous. necessary yeah <laughs> It didn't. It, the st- story car started off like semi normal, and it just kind of like devolved real quickly. So, anyways, that's a uh, coach's Amazonian story. Did you want to talk about it anymore? No, I think we've talked think- about coach as much as we should. <laughs> uh, I could do a whole podcast about coach, but anyways, yeah, all go right. Ahead. So uh, next is Taj Johnson George. I was really mad by this vote. Well, I, let's start with Taj, oh, Taj, Taj Johnson herself. George, and then we'll go Sorry. to that. Yeah, I love Taj. I, really I think like she's Taj. awesome. Yeah. She is. She was really great in the social aspect of mm-hmm. the game, even though she was sent to exile so many times. And par- she was. She went to exile four times. Mm-hmm. I was like, holy cow. I didn't... Re- like, the first two times she goes with Brendan. And then she goes... Obviously, well, once is with her husband, to be fair. She sent herself there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but uh, the other one is... Um, the other one, I think she was sent there and she went with Sierra where she had to explain to Sierra. Yeah. Because that's how also another proof, more proof that Brendan's not great at communicating. He didn't even tell Sierra yeah. about their exile alliance. Taj had to, which she shouldn't have had to. But, oh, yeah, I agree. I really like Taj. She may not. I mean, as far as strategy, I don't think she did a lot. But she was great at building relationships, asking the questions. Okay, so what do you mm-hmm. think about this? What are we going to do about this? Yeah. And getting the information that she needed to keep going for sure for and sure. i just thought she was a great player great person i liked her a lot yeah i really like taj it's too bad she's never come back whether it's survivor not asking or she her saying no i i'm sure i'm sure it's probably her saying no i imagine they asked her but i could be wrong um i really liked surprisingly enough when they did exile island her and her husband um that eddie eddie was a great confessionalist i'm like man they should get him on the show i mean it has been quite a few years since then but he just like the way he was like talking. I was like, well, you'd be so interesting, but he's he's like a, an NFL Hall of Famer, if I recall. So it'd be kind of a hard get. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. But yeah, Taj was just great. Um, she had her. Everyone has their flaws in the game. Taj had hers, but Taj was. I think Taj. Once we reach the final personal opinion, once we reach the final mm, brother. I mean, let's really think about it. Okay. Because we know where we're going here is JT's going to win a perfect game seven zero. Mm-hmm. He's going to get all seven jury votes. Not going to see any votes against him. He played a perfect game. He didn't play any idols. He didn't have to idle any votes away. Nothing. Because in the history of Survivor, there's only been three perfect winners. I know I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit, but I want to get something. There's only been three perfect winners, and only two have done it without idling away any votes. Mm. So really, two perfect perfect games, and one perfect game with a slight asterisk because <laughs> they had to idle away some votes. <coughs> Sorry for that cough. Okay. So JT's competition, anyone who could have beat BJT, we are now at the merge. Could Joe have beaten JT at the final two? No. Could Brendan have beaten JT at the final two? 
No. Could Tyson have beat JT at the final two? Probably not. Nope. Sierra. No. No. Debbie. No. Coach. No. Aaron. No. Obviously, Stephen Fishback. We know that answer. So Taj, in my opinion, I don't know if she can beat JT, but I feel like Taj is the strongest competition to JT winning this game and in the entire merge. Like, there's no one. And even in the pre-merge, I don't know if I could talk to anyone in the pre-merge and have them beat JT if they made it. I still don't think so, because even though she had great relationships with people, she was never good at any of the challenges. And in this era of Survivor, mm -hmm. that's important. And I don't think she was ever... I don't think people ever gave her any value for any strategy that well, we don't and, and it could be different because we don't hear anything like that because jt is a winner so they don't show you as much of taj or her gameplay or whatever but from what i've seen mm -hmm. on the show maybe she would have got one or vote or so i guess but i still think yeah. that people were just so in love with jt and so respected his gameplay and so liked him as a person and so liked the fact that he won so many challenges at the end mm -hmm. and like he was just overwhelmingly going to be the winner. I don't think Tosh would have beaten him. Next is Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Um, Aaron, hairstylist, definitely had hairstyles all season. <laughs> Out of everyone on the season, she had the most hairstyles. I, I mean, like so. everyone else's hair is just the way it is, but Aaron's like over here doing pigtails, ponytails, uh, sorry, not ponytails, uh, side tail, <laughs> side tails. Side uh, she braided it and it Bra was down and then it was up. Yeah. That's more than almost everybody. Maybe Debbie. I don't know. I just it said hairstylist, and then like her hair is just like so like big in my opinion. That I I yeah. She's yeah, a hairstylist. She did her hair. <laughs> Unlike Coach, I did not question Aaron and her hairstyling. You question Coach here, <laughs> Uh I question Coach on a lot of things, okay. but it's <laughs> so. Anyways, Aaron, what did you think about her? I just think that she was. Uh, she was just too... What is the word I'm looking for? When you just let everything show. She was never guarded enough. She just... Anything she thought or felt, she said. And that's never good gameplay. So the only reason she was brought to the end was because no one liked her. She was the goat. And I don't ever really like goats. So I didn't really care for yeah, her. Yeah. I actually, almost in a way, like don't fully understand how Aaron got to the end. But it's almost like there were bigger threats once we hit the merge. And they were all... Just, except for Sierra, I guess. They were all just being eliminated until we got to, oh, Aaron's still here. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's, that happens like every season, it feels like. There's always somebody yeah. that just slips through because they're not a threat yeah. and they're not a terribly crazy person. I mean, so. that is a way to play. I'm not sure if Aaron had much choice, though, in that because it seemed like she never really got an alliance together. She never really was working yeah, well, closely with anybody. For not getting an alliance or Oh, no, I'm on, I, I agree. I'm with okay. you. I'm just saying that. That like sometimes it's like, oh, they stayed under the radar and they slipped to the end on purpose. And I feel like from what we saw, no. it was like she didn't really have a choice <laughs> no. in the matter. It wasn't like, oh, I could do this or I could do this. You know, it was like kind of got there. So I like Aaron. Um, but I, yeah. I For what reasons? Like, what did she I do? I mean, I didn't hate Aaron. Okay. She made Coach the Evil Grin. I like that. But uh, no, I mean, like I, I like I overall have Aaron did not annoy me. Okay, which is more than well, I say about some people. Yeah, she annoyed me towards <laughs> the end, and did that's she? only because she started getting more screen time. Yeah, and yeah, she was very annoying. In my yeah, opinion. she did seem to grant some people's nerves. Like I know Tyson didn't really care for her. Um, Coach obviously didn't care for her. So well, she's okay. So for example, mm -hmm. right after Taj or right before the Taj vote. Yeah. She's like, oh, I, I don't scramble. I'm not going to scramble. That yep. doesn't do anything. It's not good, whatever. And I'm not really sure how to approach it, but I do need to talk to them. So then it cuts to her talking to JT and she's just like, so Taj needs to go, basically. Like she has no tact <laughs> nice. and she has no like Aaron and I would get along. humility. It's just like, you know, Taj needs to go. She probably would win. Take me. And it's just kind of like, okay. No, that's what I want. Sure. Man, I mean, if you're in alliance with somebody, that's exactly what I want. I want to hear honesty. I want well, to hear she's your... not in an alliance with them. So. I know. <laughs> but to be fair, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Did it work? I mean, were they going to vote Taj anyways? I don't. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But uh, I mean, heck, oh, you're over here knocking her. And I'm like, that's no, sounds, her, sounds brilliant. It worked. I'm yeah. just saying she's annoying. <laughs> dang mary you cut so cut so deep you cut mm. so deep no i i liked aaron but 
uh, the fact that she did get on, it seemed like quite a few people's nerves, though she was never voted out. Um, circumstance or, or her actual uh, strategic play, um, I, I think there's something to be said when people are living with somebody and there seems to be a consensus thought. Now, she was never as hated as anyone as like Sierra, clearly. Cause Sierra was like, the, everyone was dumping on her all season, but mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, I liked her, but I also didn't have to live with her, so. Oh. Uh, all right, so then we move on to Stephen Fishback, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wizard, the Wizard. The Wizard. The Wizard, as Coach dubbed him. What do you think about Fishback? What's outside of outside of Final Tribal? What do you think about Fishback? I I really liked him a lot. Mm-hmm. I think he was a great player, even if he was not physically a threat really in any of the challenges. He was a great strategic player, yeah. great social player. Um, he's smart. He thought about everything, thought about the impact of everything. He narrated the season too. Like he was always like telling us the events mm-hmm. what was happening. Like I kind of thought, which is a little unusual because uh-huh. it's, it's made, it didn't almost make it seem like he was running the show more than JT. And I know that probably wasn't the case. I, I think it was pretty equal, but he definitely was the guiding factor in a lot of decisions. I think in a way it was almost like it's like okay so I'm not I'm trying to think of like the perfect analogy so track me here this isn't perfect it's almost like JT was the president and Steven was like his counselor giving him all the information I don't know if that's perfect JT is like the figurehead yeah like everyone loves JT so he's the figurehead but really Steven's like kind of like the brains obviously like yeah. JT is not dumb by any means when I first watched it I really thought that Steven was more of the brains and, but But I think Steven elevates JT and JT elevates Steven. Yes. Second, second watching through, I did notice most of their conversations. Yeah. Maybe Steven would say, what do you think about? Or I think Tasha go or whatever the example is. They really did bounce it back and forth and they both looked at all the elements. And I was surprised Mm -hmm. at how many times JT, JT would say something like, well, that would affect this or something, you know, that Steven hadn't even brought up. Yeah. So I really think it did. it, It was, there were two parts of one brain. I really yeah. do think it, it it's kind of really hard to talk about with one without talking about the other. It really because, is because I like Steven fish back. I think the first time we watched it, I was like, Oh, Steven better not win. JT had like, I was so enamored with JT the first time we watched this season as were you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this time I was like, now knowing what's going to happen, not having to worry about who's going to win. I was definitely more focused on everybody else who wasn't uh JT and coach. And Steven definitely like jumped up for me. But, uh, I told, but even though the first time through, though, I mean, I know we're watching it at a television show, but like, that's really what it, the, all these people are going through this for the first time. They're not experiencing token cheese the second time. Mm-hmm. So like, JT's, I don't know, apparently so lovable to everybody. I mean, like, he's just he's probably easy to get along with, easy to talk to. JT seems to agree with whatever everyone, anyone's saying. Like, he's not like starting arguments or annoying right. people or, you know, probably stays quiet and he stays quiet. You know, uh, he has that accent which is definitely helping. Um, he's uh, he is 24 here so um he's with he's in an age range that actually there's a lot of not a lot of older people is not the way to say it but the people who make the merge are on the older side so i don't i was gonna say a lot of people here were about his similar age but that's not really true um yeah i don't know jt like just was never the target he was a big he was a big asset to the tribe in pre-merge Mm-hmm. So why vote him out? Like he was out there doing his best. You know that one. What was that one challenge where Spencer, I guess, apparently caused the loss, and JT basically done everything. But then they're like, "What if we just like double team JT and like hold and like grab him, put him to the ground?" Well, you know that challenge yeah. where he like loses a tooth, if I recall. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like that's like we see stuff like that. It's like you can't get rid of him. And then Joe goes, and then Tabir is like so focused on imploding that they, you know, it's almost like it kind of like. It kind of makes sense. Like Steven only got one vote all game against him. And it was, a, it was because of Aaron had to throw away a vote. Cause she didn't want to vote for whoever they were voting for that night. Was that mm-hmm. the Sierra vote? Uh, I don't remember. I just remember throwing away. It was one of the Tim beer votes where Aaron threw a vote on Steven. Cause she didn't want to vote for who was actually going home. Mm-hmm. But Steven otherwise played a perfect game until final tribal, of course. Right. Where it's like, man, if Steven had gone against Aaron, would Steven of seven to Aaron? I don't, I mean, I don't want to get too I don't deep know that conversation, you, but I think Steven would have won. Aaron. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think don't, maybe five twos her. Like Aaron gets two votes. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. 
It would so, it would be something like that. Because for a fact, Steve will get JT's <laughs> vote. For a fact, uh, actually not for a fact, on anyone else. I'm trying to look through the rest of the. Of he the, would get. Uh, yeah. I feel like co- he would get Coach's vote. He might get Tyson's You're vote. You're right. Coach would be like the wizard has now become the wizard yeah. master or something. Yeah. Tyson probably because Tyson's not a fan of Aaron. Maybe Debbie. That's, I mean, that right there is three. Taj, if he could convince Taj to like not vote for Aaron, then he'd have four, and that's all he would need to beat Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Because if he has, I don't JT, know about Brandon or Sierra. He has JT, Coach, and Tyson because the JT obviously loves Steven and then Coach and Tyson don't like Aaron. That's three. I mean, he only needs to figure out one. He only needs to figure out one more out of everyone. Yeah. Who knows if Brendan even likes Aaron? You know, like I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's, yeah. So, I think Stephen Bates beats Aaron, but no, JT played a perfect game, and I can't, I mean, like, he, it was funny, because he's like, I haven't lied all game, and then, like, I said, I, I remember when he said that, I was like, oh, man, they're showing this to us, because he's about to do a bunch of lying, mm-hmm. and he did, he sure did. Once he they did. hit the merge, he but lied to, like, loved him. every Tim Beer person. I don't think he ever lied to Stephen, though. The bromance was real. No, and I do wonder if Stephen would have taken him. I don't knock Steven for considering not taking him. Well, no. I don't knock Steven at all. I know he JT. He just was too honest about JT it. JT at Final Tribal was so smart in how he played it. Like every single, it wasn't a perfect well, Final Tribal, but he was so smart in yeah, how he played it. Yeah, let's talk about Steven's Final Tribal since we're talking about We're Steven. talking about both. Let's just talk about both because they're connected. Okay. Steven goes in there and thinks to himself, I'm going to be kind. I'm not going to attack JT because in some seasons, attacking the other person has not favored well. Right. Like you don't look like a good person, but here it's like, JT's like Steven's basically, you know, hiding in the shadows and avoiding all the work while I'm out here doing all the work. It's basically what JT's pitch was. Mm-hmm. I stood out front, and you know, here I am. You know, vote for me. And like this jury, that's what they wanted. Yeah. JT knew what they wanted. Of course, JT from the very beginning apparently already knew what they wanted because he was loved. But I mean, so what did Steven do? I mean, what? All right, tell me what Steven did. <laughs> Steven just one of the main things I noticed is that he lacked confidence. He was like Mm -hmm. very timid and you could tell he was super nervous and but but and I'm not saying I would do any better at all in tribal council. But surprisingly I think I would have taken Steven approach as well. Surprisingly, like anytime he talked, it was just the wrong thing. He always said the wrong thing. He didn't know what the person was really asking. He didn't really know how to communicate with them in a way that they would respect or respond to. So he thinks that he is, you know, Debbie is demanding honesty. Yeah. Then you just say immediately, JT. I would have taken JT. I would, no, uh-huh. I would have taken JT. And say it confidently because that's what she wants. You just, yeah. confidence. He needed some confidence. And JT's over there like almost exuding confidence, you know? Yes. And that yeah. people are just drawn to that. Yeah. Like there was a few times JT put his head in his hands or something. But for the most part, he was very confident. He was very even with the accent and the bag accent and the bad grammar or whatever, he was able to communicate Those are endearing things. He was able to communicate what they wanted to hear. Mm-hmm. Steven was so focused on what he needed to say. I don't think he heard what they wanted to hear. Here's yeah. It's, and this is something that I noticed, especially when JT like answered Debbie, I was like, Holy cow. I was like JT, I think sat around and I'm, he's, they've had time um, to sit around and think about like, what is he going to say to each individual mm-hmm. juror or, or, or at least how am I going to approach this juror? And Steven, I feel like, feel like is answering questions in a way that Steven would want to hear. Like, let's say, so Steven's like answering Debbie's quite or not, sorry, not Debbie's question. Steven's answering anyone else but Debbie <laughs> and their question in the way that if Steven had asked that question, what would Steven want to hear? Mm-hmm. So it's almost like Steven's like really thinking like he, he's not thinking specifically, what is this person? What, what do they, what do they value and how should I answer their question that yeah. pleases them more so? How can I honestly answer this question in the way that Steven would want to hear it? Mm-hmm. And that only works for certain people. And I don't think any of those certain kind of people were actually on the jury. Yeah. Because there could have been somebody like, I feel like an Aubrey Brocco. I know I keep Brenton co wrong for some reason. Let's say if Aubrey Brocco that was on the jury, I feel like she would value the way Steven answered the mm-hmm. question, but she's not there. Right. And so part of the game is what does my jury want from yeah. me? And JT nailed it. Like mm-hmm. he was burying Steven and they were loving it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was burying Steven well, he did it. and Steven just took it. He always did it in a nice way though. It was, it was kind of like a, here's a factual yeah. bearing. It wasn't like Steven sucks. Mm-hmm. I hate Steve. You know, it was yeah. nothing like that. And the other thing Steven did was 
like halfway through when he noticed that things were not going his way, mm-hmm. he did attack JT with a bold face lie, bald face lie, whatever. I, was it and it was so it was a little obvious. Later. It was a little bit later. Yeah. It was just such an Especially obvious lie. Was. Yeah. And it failed miserably. Yeah. Like it was like a last ditch effort to turn and things then back around. The moment and it didn't he work. said he was taking Aaron instead of JT, yeah. which is probably the truthful answer, but you're right. He should have like boldly proclaimed JT. And then if Debbie had questioned him, like, no, it was always JT. It was yeah. never anyone but JT. I, you know, I told Aaron that to, to appease Aaron. Yeah. I don't know. He loses Aaron's vote. Not that he got it anyways. No, <laughs> no I, I, I guess, of course I, I told Aaron that because yeah. we're seeing her on the fire and what else am I supposed yeah, to like, say? Yeah, like what am I supposed to tell her? I'm taking, right. you know, if I did that, like she go talk to JT, you know, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I get it. It's a hard situation to be in, but for sure, uh, Steven, yeah. Like it he, was just his because, confidence. Well, the thing is, the moment he answers that, we haven't we haven't really touched upon this because this is one of those brilliant moves by JT. Whether it was real mm-hmm. or JT's just playing it up because you watch the Ponderosa video right after the final travel's done and him and Steven are like having a good old time. Yeah. So um, I'm sure it was partially for the jury. But JT, like he says that and JT's like, like head and hands, like. I can't believe like yeah. I was always committed to you, Steven, you know, it's like they're in a marriage and like Steven admitted that he was thinking about cheating on JT, but remember they're not married. They're playing a the game of survivor and JT's like, I can't believe you even thought about cheating on me. Uh, and then, but he's saying it in front of a bunch of people who are going to hand him money. Right. It's like JT won the divorce sell- settlement, right. you know, <laughs> but it's so crazy because they're still like great friends to this day. Like Steven officiated their, his JT's wedding, JT was at Steven's wedding. Um, actually, Taj was at both their weddings, too. I thought that was kind of cool. Well, I'm glad um, yeah, they yeah, yeah. made up with But, her. I mean, like, it's, it's cool. They're still great friends today. Yeah. I just listened to a podcast that they did last year um, with both them on it. So, yeah. They're still great friends. So, it's like it's like we're talking about, like, JT totally slaughtering Steven and Steven taking it. And then Steven trying to get back at JT. But, like, it was just Didn't a final work. tribal. It wasn't like this is going to end the friendship. It was a really great final tribal. Yeah. It was it was just a little sad to see Steven work so hard yeah. and then just fall apart at the end. Yeah. But JT shined at the end. JT, so. I mean, Steven almost seemed unprepared in a lot of ways. Like, he wasn't ready. I really think it was, he was so nervous that he, like, memorized mm-hmm. what he thought was important. Oh. And then anything that, like, came out that, was that outside wasn't, of what yeah, he, thought. he yeah. couldn't improvise. If you watch his hands, anyone who just go, you don't have to, like, watch all final tribal. But just like from the very first juror, like his hands are like constantly, I'm, tr- I'm like imitating right now with my hands. But he's like he, it, nervous They're twitching. twitching. Yeah. There's no other way to describe it. He's doing a bunch of nervous twitching. Mm-hmm. So while we're getting like close ups of their face and stuff, the jury is sitting off their sides just watching these two. And I'm sure the whole final tribal, however long it was, hour and a half, two hours, who cares? He's over there doing that and a little nervous twitching. It's mm-hmm. like he's probably lying about what he's saying right now right. because who nervous, you know, all the nervous twitching is not. Even though it's just Steven. It's just not a good look. Yeah. It's almost like you should add like. <laughs> I'm di- sure JT was just like a calm, confident, yep. like a rock over yep. there. So yep. JT, J- this is not a perfect final travel. I will not pitch this as one of the best final travels. Like I love Chris Doherty's in, in Vanuatu. Like, gosh, that was darn near perfection. And it was entertaining. But JT here, though, played a very, very good final travel. Yeah. If you want to know how to do a final travel, I'd watch this one. This is this a good, is a one, good to one to, to, to <laughs> learn because it's almost like when he like told when Debbie asked that her question, he's like, he's like, Debbie, my mom, you know, like he brings up his mom. Oh, man, you got connection with Debbie because Debbie mm-hmm. is a mom and she's a school principal. She right. loves kids. My mom told me this. And he's like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like he came ready. Like and he when was coach ready. asked, you know, he immediately went to the yep. honor and honesty yep. and yep. You know, for each person, he had something mm-hmm. that they kind of related to. Or he like, with. it's like he knew what they wanted mm-hmm. because yeah. And so that's why I, I know it's a whole different season, but like people say JT just got lucky. He's like, no, JT knew no. what he was doing full and well, knew what he was doing. And I think in heroes versus villains, JT, JT up until of course the blunder, is not doing a bad job like he's not playing sure he's not like beloved by all because everyone you know is it's a whole different kind of season but i think jt in another final tribal i mean unless he's like gotten dumb which i doubt he would he like he know like almost he knows what people want mm-hmm. you know jt's not dumb though steven definitely helps him and i do think if those two were ever together again, they would probably be targeted. But they would be targeted. Yeah. It, it, they can only have if they were together again with people who didn't know who they were for some reason. <laughs> Undercover JT yes. and Steven. <laughs> what you have to do is you put like fake mustaches on them both, and like <laughs> and like color their hair, so, or you shave Ooh, their heads, wow. and like you put them on a season together. Undercover undercover JT. 
That'd be funny. I'd watch that. Okay, so um, do you have anything else about those people before we get into the questions we got? No, I just like them a lot. All right, cool, cool, cool. So we, I asked for um, patrons and I asked for uh, those of you watching on YouTube questions about the season that we would answer. And uh, I have, I think, 11 of them. So let's get started. The first one is Benjamin. He asks, how would this season have turned out if Brendan was able to communicate with his allies? Not Brendan knows what's... I mean, he doesn't... Benjamin here knows what's up. Communicate. All right, sorry. How would the season have turn, turned out if Brendan was able to communicate with his allies and the Exile Alliance actually worked out? Well, I don't think it would have been as entertaining <laughs> because yeah. you would have had Coach going sooner. You'd have had Sierra going and Tyson going... Well, Tyson went pretty early. Tyson but, went pretty early, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we talked about it a little bit, I guess, already. So I guess we're saying basically the Exile Alliance is Brendan, Taj, Sierra. Who's the... Steven. Steven and JT. JT got added at the last minute. JT would have gotten, yeah, pulled in. I'm sure you got pulled in based on the other two people. So if they were the final five, I still think JT... I mean, like, I I couldn't see Brendan and Sierra, like, bamboozling the Jawpa 3. It's almost like... It's the same thing that happens, mm-hmm. just a different boot order for Timbira. Right. Yeah. And it would have been, oh, man, we're watching an obvious Paganging here. I mean, not Paganging, but kind of, yeah, an obvious Paganging. A Paganging, Mary, is I when know. the other tribe gets, okay. <laughs> and then this season, it kind of was. Like, it, the, all, almost all Timbira went straight through, um, mm-hmm. but not quite. So, I, we, uh, so would we say it would have, so basically the boot order would have been different. There would have been way less coach, which you would have loved. But right, that's what I said. I've been less less entertaining. You're admitting coach I'm is entertaining? admitting coach is entertaining. entertaining. Just because he annoys me doesn't mean that it's not entertaining TV. Oh. Doesn't mean people don't. I hope enjoy everyone it. heard that. Mary loves coach. Uh, it's not what I I'm going to send coach a message on Instagram. I'm going to let him know. All right. Next question is from Snake Bit 1995. Since I all right, well I'm gonna, I haven't read all these questions by the way fully through, so I'm going to read it and then we'll go from there. Uh, since I only recently found the channel, I'm catching up on the show. I'm currently on Gabon. My question is more about the show in general. How do you think editing play editing plays a role in the perception of a character? Should how much? Um, sorry. How much should be shown to the viewer or hidden to enhance the plot at the expense of someone's depiction? Obviously, it's important and a key aspect that no doubt influences perceptions, even in subtle ways like music or showing a snake while a villain character is hatching a plan. How much edits too much and how much is fair? So basically, what is our opinion? I think I'm going to sum this up into what is our opinion about how the show portrays characters, good or bad? Um, do you want to start? I feel like you should answer Okay, this. I, can, I, can, yeah. I can definitely answer this. I, I think Survivor is a story. Shocking, I know. And as long as the story is entertaining and is not, and is not making, it's not, how do I say this? I, well, number one needs to be entertaining. Number two, I need to know how the heck the winner pulled off the win. That's personally, that's what I want to know. How do they do it? Um, but number three, I think, is honest depictions of people. So, like, if somebody is being a goofball out there, like Coach, depict them as a goofball. Totally. Like, that's that's self-inflicted. <laughs> um, if somebody's, uh, you know, gets clotheslined, yeah, that's a goofy moment. Um, if someone is is being a villain on purpose, like Fair Play, they're a villain. You know, but then they get, you get into situations where it's like Rupert in Pearl Islands. I know I'm going way back, but like Rupert could have been portrayed, I think, as more honest, but they portrayed him as a hero instead. I as mean, more honest, but they portrayed well, him as a hero? Well, honest meaning like they kind of like oh, ignored I, his all of flaws. his flaws. They could have more honestly we, portrayed yeah, him. Yeah, honestly honest. portrayed him, sorry. It, to make him into a hero, and it's like, well, is that being dishonest to us? And I think at the end of the day... Survivor's a story and it's the story they want to tell us and everybody signed up knowing full and well what they're getting into The only thing they don't that's on them because the show isn't like hitting The only thing I would add to that is that I like when they do those subtle things especially with music or Mm -hmm. with visual editing Um, You know last night we're watching the finale of token chains and right at the end right before JT and Steven go to final travel There's an image of two owls on a tree branch one flies away and one's left. Yeah. You know, like just simple things like yeah. that I think are great. And different seasons I think have better editing than others yes, and so on and so definitely. forth. Definitely. This but, season had amazing editing. And I think you can probably board. do too much mm-hmm. as far as, you know, oh, the alligators eating the 
snake right as somebody says something about sure. something you know i think sometimes it can be a little over the top but for the most part i enjoy it i will say that the animal imagery to me i kind of ignore because i know it definitely feels a little bit like this is what they want me to feel like like yeah. if you watch rob sestrinino in the amazon like anytime they cut to him they use a snake in between it's like come on <laughs> um <laughs> it's ridiculous so i guess if you're asking like if any of it i don't like animal animal in imagery because the con i feel like the average viewer doesn't really understand not uh, understands not the it's right like word like subliminal like, messaging like, yeah, it's almost like subliminal messaging <laughs> kind of because the average viewer it's like oh they're on an island surviving and like oh that per i don't like that person i can't really explain why i don't like them but yeah. i don't like them and it's like could be stuff like that um view on facebook and you but and their you job questions. their editor's job is to make a story. likable story yeah. and in a story you have the heroes, heroes and, villains and villains and comic reliefs right. yep so sure i'm sure they <laughs> overemphasize it but so it's enjoyable um yeah i think they i think they can go too far and i top of my head don't have any examples um i'm sure there are but That's for sure fun question sure. good question uh next one is giovanni our favorite uh pokemon trainer i'm sorry pokemon villain uh giovanni asked does coach suffer from jss you know what jss is mary no i do not judge sergeant syndrome where he's lying to everyone, including us, the audience. I think so. That's what uh, Giovanni says. Um, absolutely. <laughs> I think Coach and Judd on the same season would never work. But Coach and Judd, I love. And I think Coach... Well, the, the difference is... Judd, yeah, because like if, if, if Giovanni's on something here, Mary. Judd lies. And then I don't think Judd remembers that he lies. So then he tells the truth or he tells a different lie. No, he's not like tribal council and he'll be like, man, I haven't lied yet, you know, but I'm thinking about starting real no, soon. He and this is like right after. Lied. This is like the day after he just told everyone no, the aisles on the he ground. he knows that he has lied. Okay. So you're saying Judd has not forgotten. No. Because the Gary's like, what about this? The idol's still, on, the idol's on the ground. Judd's like, oh, okay, man. All right. Well, I told you I'm not a very good liar. I, and he's I can't not. do He's not. He's not. He's not a good liar at all. Well, now there's <laughs> coach really. Um, I no, I think the difference is okay. Judd doesn't necessarily believe his lies, but Coach does believe his lies. You're saying like Judd's lying, but, but like Judd's not he's lying. fully committed to his lie, is what you're saying? No, he's committed to his lie, but he knows he's lying. He knows he's lying. Oh, Coach literally will change his thinking so that he believes what he is saying is true. Oh, okay, I see. So the di okay, so the difference. Is, all right, all right, I'm tracking. I I'm on board with that. That's a good explanation. All right. Next question is Joshua from Joshua Spitzer. Also, Joshua Spitzer does is Outcast Originals and made all those hidden immunity or uh, sorry, the oh, individual cool. immune necklaces for uh, that we gave away not too long ago. Um, so, okay. So Joshua asked more so for Survivor as a whole. This is the last time they have a 16 person cast. We did talk about that with no swaps. We didn't discuss that. No swaps. Mm. Um, and I think it played out perfectly here. So do you think it could ever be done and done well in the modern era? I think with the new... Okay, this is kind of getting into season 41 and 42. Um, I think with the new 26-day format, it could be prime time to bring back 16-player casts. Um, long story short, I think 26-day format is a very temporary thing just because they had to quarantine everybody for two weeks. So, And they only had so much time on the island, period, and, and, and money to pay all these people to be around. Sure, so. but... I'm not getting too much into that. He, he basically, he's asking, does he think that... Let's say they do keep 26 days. Mm-hmm. Is it is it now time high time to bring back sixteen players? With no swap. With no swap. If I, we're doing twenty six days and so and it's like a permanent thing, not just two seasons. Right. Obviously you can give your opinion. My short opinion of this is I I like this. I don't think especially if you have a good cast and a good story going on, there's mm -hmm. no need because the swap just disrupts things so much and that can be a great thing if you have a boring or a boring season or nothing's really happening or one like tribe's Redemption just getting Island being annihilated you know Pacific. it's never fun to watch just one tribe getting an island i guess unless it's guatemala but then it's like a train wreck but anyways <laughs> guatemala tri swap yeah but yeah. you know what i mean um <laughs> so i would be perfectly fine with that i think that would be really cool i my opinion is no they should do 18 <laughs> because just because the show's doing 26 days, it's still the same number of episodes, same number of tribal councils, whatnot. Like, the show doesn't, 26 days is not going to change how many episodes there are. And so the issue of Medivax and 16 players is still real. So I think they, they went with 18 for 41, 42. 
And I think that's a perfect amount. I think I always think 18 is perfect amount, but it's perfect amount. So, um, I think it could work, but I do not think they should go back to 16 personally, but it's just an opinion. I don't make the show. All right. Joe asks this season's version of exile Island brought the opportunity to create cross tribal alliances. Why do you think they never tried this twist again? Um, I don't want to sound, how do I make this? I don't want to sound mean. So Joe, just take this with all of, uh, cause you probably forgot in season 29, they do this again with two tribe members. Yeah. Okay. They do exile Island with two tribe members. Season 29. It's easy to forget because, um, I don't really care I mean, for the season. So maybe other people forgot members. it too. Um, season 29 is not one of my favorites by any means, but yeah, they do. They do do it again in season 29. So, but right. it doesn't become like a feature. It's not. Yeah. It's, and it's, to, I think this is the most memorable mm-hmm. time they do exile with two people between two. Like it's not even Honestly, close. Honestly, I just think it's rough because you have so many players missing out on rewards and on food and stuff. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the reasoning that they don't bring it back though. They do. 29. I, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> as a consistent feature in the uh, show. I think exile Island kind of wears out. It's welcome. Like it's been around at, at, at token chains. It's been around since season 12. And I think it maybe took a one season break in between. Mm. It's like, it's really been around for a while. So, all right. So the next question is once again, from Giovanni, our favorite Pokemon villain. Uh, did Aaron play at the wrong time? I could see her in that Sierra Easton archetype. What he's saying essentially is I could see Aaron voting on her own mother in another season and being respected for it. So did Aaron play in the wrong season? If you're comparing Aaron and Sierra, I would beg that they're two different players. I do think they're two different Very players. Different players. Yeah. I, I don't know what all, you know, you're looking at as far as her good gameplay and stuff, but I really feel like Sierra was one of those players that could keep things to her chest, could p- make logical decisions, not emotional decisions. I think I just think that Aaron was way too vocal and open about whatever she was thinking and feeling. So. Keep in mind, Mary has not seen Sierra in Second Chances, nor has she probably remembers. It's been a long time. Sierra since I've being seen. like the first boot out of Game Changer, so it's been a long. She's time only since speaking from Blood vs. Water, yeah, and we haven't watched Blood vs. Water in a, a few years, so. Um, I'm. I mean, honestly, I, I think it's a for me, it's a hard comparison because I also I don't feel like I have like a great understanding of Sierra's gameplay, so. If, if we're Sierra or Aaron or both Sierra. Okay. Uh, Easton. Um, so did Aaron play at the wrong time? No, because here she's 26. She gets any old, she gets, unless you're saying, can we transplant 26 yeah, year old just, yeah. Aaron to another season? Then maybe, but <laughs> I mean, she got to third place. Yeah. I don't think she would ever win any season she was in, but <sighs> yeah, it's a hard one. Yeah. I guess. Are we asking, could she get second place? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> could Aaron could. win a season? I don't know. I don't think not so. this Aaron from this season. Maybe Aaron now. All right. So the next question is Scott D. He asks, does the color coordinator clothing, does the color coordinated clothing bother slash distract anyone else? I find it so ridiculous and comical. And in some cases, even sexist. I hate <laughs> how survivors started doing this. Why bother having buffs if they're going to be dressed head to toe in their tribe colors? Sorry. Rant over. Um, do you find it ridiculous that they're that, that that back in the early days they were not wearing the colors of their tribe except for mm-hmm. the buff? Do you think it's ridiculous that now they do? I don't. I don't. I mean, sorry, you don't. Okay. Um, I kind of get it. Like, if you're treating, if you wanted to treat the show as this is a social experiment where we're literally just dropping people off on an island, um, you definitely get that with like Palau, where like they totally surprise them. Pearl Islands, they totally surprise them, but like. When it's like, okay, we're all sitting on a ship. Jeff is telling me how the game's going to begin. Um, welcome, you know, welcome to Survivor. They're doing the whole spiel like that. It's not a surprise drop. I do not think it's ridiculous that they're wearing the colors of the tribe they're starting on. However, if we ever do in our season where it's like, surprise, we're dropping off that. Anybody knowing? Also, here's your bag of shoes. Have fun. Like we ever do cool. a surprise drop, yeah. then yes, they should not be dressed in the colors of the tribe because it's both they're supposed to be tricked sure and and they and the few times they have done they literally have been tricked so um yeah if they ever do a surprise again then for sure but otherwise no i mean i i know it sounds dumb but like i like power rangers so they do the same <laughs> thing maybe that's where my favoritism comes from so anyways next question we're now into the youtube questions and some of these i'm sorry if i cannot pronounce your name properly uh this one's spelled v-a-i-n-o but it has like dots above some of the letters, like A and O. So I'm not sure how to say that. Yeah, no. Oh wow, Mary, I don't you're an know. international I'm just expert. Guessing. 
In my opinion, JT played the best game ever in the history of Survivor on this season. Where would you guys rank him in your winner rankings? I think it's hard. I don't have all 40 winners ranked in my brain. <laughs> but let's say, Mary, let's say out of the, out of, you don't have to rank him, I guess. But on a scale of one to 10, what would you give JT's game this season? Well, I was going to say he's like in probably my top five winners, honestly. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you still give him that. I'm just saying, yeah. don't expect to hear all he four. He pretty much had a perfect game, I think. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I can't see everything, but based yeah. on what we see, I would give him like a nine out of 10. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm trying to think of like any flaws he had this season gameplay wise. And like, it really wasn't until the final four where people were like, let's target JT. Yeah. And it's like, but then JT wins three immunities back to back to back. And it's like, they couldn't. You know, so the question is, would JT have been voted out Final Four? And if he would have been, then I guess he wouldn't. It wouldn't have been a ten out of ten game. But then again, part of the game is winning is challenges. Yeah, you can't just that ignore is that. Part of the game. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> I know. But sometimes it gets ignored for so. Some people favor social, the social aspect. Some people favor the challenge aspects. And I think sometimes it's it's it, we favor something, and it's like we kind of forget that like this it other part is both. a very valid yeah. part of the game. So, um, where would I rank him? Top three. Because <laughs> he's one of the three perfect winners. Okay, sure. <laughs> I mean, frankly. Yeah, but do you like the other two? No, as no, much I as love you JT. Like? Okay. I love JT. My personal opinion is I love JT. So JT, realistically, top five. Um, but, I mean, on paper, he's top three. So, anyways, probably number one because he did it first. So, anyways, all right. What is your... All right, next person... All right, next, sorry, next question is from Mitchell. He asks, what is your favorite Tyson moment from this season? <laughs> That's a good one. Uh... I'll go first if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, I <laughs> forgot what challenge it was. It's the one where they're throwing pig pots between bars that the other tribe yeah. set up. It's it makes more sense when you've seen it. <laughs> but anyways, when they when Timbira wins and Tyson's like, "Yeah, let's break them," and he grabs two of them and he's in the background of T Timbira's all like <laughs> hugging each other and celebrating. Tyson's in the background <laughs> by himself. He just grabs them and he slams them on the ground, and it's just like one of those like blinking you miss it moments. That's um, funny. but that's like my favorite Tyson moment. What's yours, Mary? I don't know. I, I enjoy watching him for some reason. The first thing that popped in my head was when he was like wearing the buff as like a loincloth <laughs> and he said he was like going to re re bring back the loincloth yeah. to society or yeah, something. Society's like that. moved too far away from right. this. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It was just hilarious. That was funny. That was really funny. Um, okay. Zachary is wondering would JT still have won unanimously if it was a final three, meaning, if JT was sitting next to Steven and Aaron, like in many other seasons in this era. Yes. You still Sorry. think you still think Taj does not give Aaron a vote. That's fine if you think that. I'm just wondering if that's what you're thinking. Because okay. remember, Aaron's there and Taj's on the jury. Does he win nine? Does he Depending win seven? Depending on how he handles or tribal, I really think he changes her feelings. I really do. Okay. I just Oh no, I'm totally on board. I think he could they, he totally could have. I think Taj it was hard to tell with Taj Steven thing because or sorry, with JT and Steven, JT and Steven basically fought in front of Taj. Taj's like, okay, and she walks away. Right. But like, if it was JT, Steven, and Aaron, and did would JT and Steven still have fought and then Aaron doesn't get involved? I don't know. So, anyways, um, I think his chances of winning unanimously are, are lower, mm -hmm. but the possi the possibility is still great that he still pulls it off. Yeah. So he still wins for sure. Oh, unanimously. Oh, definitely. Good possibility, but I don't know. All right. So, W R X E N O N, it's not a real name. I or maybe it's War Zena, I don't know. Asks, who is your favorite player and why is it coach? <laughs> why is it coach? So, Mary, tell me why is your favorite player coach? <laughs> coach is not my favorite player. He asked, who's your favorite player if and why is it coach? I had to give a reason for him being a favorite player to someone. It's because he adds so much <laughs> entertainment yeah, to the show. He really does. He's not, he's by no means a dud. And he, and I really hope he gets a fourth time to play. We're saying, if he ever gets a fourth time to play, we're saying this way before that happens. But I really get it. He'll be, he needs. One needs to be a Survivor Legend season, and he's be one of the legends. It only makes sense. I mean, he is a legend. That's the only season I think people are really like. Okay, we gotta have this now—a legend season of like all the biggest names. Well, it's like there's only 20 people we put on the cast, and there's so many big names. But Coach has to be one of them, along with Russell Hans. So, um, Coach is my favorite player on the season because almost every time he's on screen, he's he like makes me giggle, laugh, or go, "Are you <laughs> kidding me?" So. Now, nah, coach in other seasons, not as fun. Coach here, the most fun. So, yeah, that's uh, that is Survivor Token Sheens in a nutshell. Um, any last thoughts, Mary? 
It was really good on a rewatch also, which I can't always say. I think I said this at the end of our Guatemala podcast, but next time is Exile Island. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we'll go back. But by the way, we didn't touch upon this at all, but watching things in HD was so nice. (laughs) But like I, I can, I totally don't mind Survivor being non H, like in in standard definition. But like when we're in Guatemala and Palau and Vanuatu, it's like, man, I wish this was in HD because the locations are so gorgeous. Yeah, and it's such a shame. Like right after Token Sheens, you know, the show is like permanently in HD and it only goes like three or four locations, and they're all like kind of the similar. So, mm, so sad. Yeah, I know. But I was watching a bit of Winners at War yesterday, and they really, I know it's not the same, but like they really go underwater a lot. I noticed that. So I thought it was kind of cool. Hmm. Anyways, I don't want to get too much into that. But uh, all right. Well, thank you all for listening. Uh, we had a fun time. We had a fun time too. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.